<laughs> this video will take you through the electromagnetic spectrum and tell you some of the uses and some of the properties of each portion. We're going to go from the lowest energy to the highest energy. It's a really good application of the wave speed equation here, which is wave speed is frequency times wavelength. All of these waves travel at the speed of light. So increasing frequency will always mean decreasing wavelength. As we go from radio waves through to x-rays, you will see that the wavelength will decrease and the frequency will increase. Firstly then, radio waves. They are the lowest frequency portion and the highest wavelength portion. Typical wavelengths between 1 meter to 1 kilometer. It's really often used for communications. For example, radios or terrestrial television. It's really good because it reflects from the ionosphere. The ionosphere is the upper atmosphere, so it doesn't get transmitted out of the ionosphere. It also diffracts into and around valleys, around hills, and around buildings, so large objects don't tend to get in the way of radio waves. Hello, Google of Physics. Next, it's microwaves. They're shorter wavelength from about one meter to one millimeter. So that does mean a higher frequency if you think about our wave speed equation I discussed at the start. They're used for mobile phone communication and for satellite communication because they're not reflected or absorbed by the ionosphere. They're also used for cooking as microwaves of almost exactly 10 centimeter wavelength transfer kinetic energy to water and fat molecules so they can actually heat up food because of that. Infrared radiation is often just called heat radiation. It's the next portion. It has wavelengths of about 0.001 meter, which is a tenth of a millimeter. The hotter an object is, the more infrared it, it emits. But all objects above absolute zero emit infrared. You might remember from your thermal physics portion that dull or matte black surfaces are the best emitters and best absorbers and light and shiny surfaces are the worst emitters and absorbers of infrared. We can actually use infrared to measure the temperature. This is an IR thermometer. We can take photographs in the infrared spectrum and that can be used for home analysis. The darkest, bluest portions are the cold areas and the reddest or whitest portions are the hottest. It's also used by the military and by police. Infrared is also used for cooking, but remember it just heats the surface of whatever you're trying to cook. Visible light is the only portion that we can see. We remember the order of the visible spectrum in the monomic Richard of York gave battle in vain. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. Now we call the higher wavelength end of the spectrum the red end and we know that is going towards the lowest frequencies and the lowest energies. The extreme of the red end is the radio wave portion that we started with. The blue end is the lower wavelength and higher frequency, therefore the higher energy. So the extreme of the blue end would be the gamma rays. One obvious use of visible light is to see. We have eyes which use lenses to focus light onto retinas. And eyes are very similar to cameras, which use lenses to focus light onto CCDs, or digital sensors. A light-dependent resistor can detect visible light, we call it an LDR for short. An LED, a light-emitting diode, can give out light. And obviously, ordinary light bulbs give out light as well. Ultraviolet is the next portion. We're getting higher energy now, higher frequency, towards the blue end. Ultraviolet has short wavelength of 1 times 10 to the minus 8 meters. Very hot objects give out ultraviolet, like for example the sun, which is an incredibly hot object, but also fluorescent lamps like you would find maybe in sunbeds. It's very high energy, so this stuff can actually damage cells, and can actually lead to mutations and cause skin cancer. We use sunblock to stop this. Sunblock has a sun protection factor, an SPF. And how you use that is you work out the normal time of somebody's skin burning in sun, multiply that by the SPF, and you have the time that you can be in the sun without burning wearing the sunblock. 
Ultraviolet is also used in forensic science because some substances fluoresce in ultraviolet light. X-rays have very short wavelengths. We're getting towards very high energies now. They're very high energy electromagnetic waves, approximately 10 to the minus 10 meter wavelengths. They're used to make X-ray photographs or X-ray scans because X-rays are absorbed by bone or metal and they're transmitted through soft tissue. X-rays can also be built up into detailed three-dimensional images by CT scanners, which is, stands for computed tomography. X-rays are made in an X-ray tube by firing high-energy beta particles at aluminium. The aluminium plate gives off the X-rays. We place an object we want to scan in between the tube and a CCD, or a digital sensor. Gamma rays are the ionizing portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. They are the highest energy, so they are the very highest frequencies. They are ionizing so they can damage living cells. Very short wavelength of 10 to the minus 12 meters. They're emitted by radioactive isotopes. They are nuclear radiation, so they only come from the nucleus of atoms. They also reach us from the sun in what we call cosmic rays. They're absorbed only by very thick lead and they can be detected by Geiger Muller tubes. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.